Hey, Vines, what are you doing here? You. What are you doing here? Well, I might ask you the same thing. Out now. Um... I am looking for Grout. You should get out of here. This place is bad news. Uh, pardon me. Okay, wait. What? Okay, let's go. gonna kill you okay that's what we're gonna do where's that guy going where's that guy going oh okay There's way too many clocks in this room. I don't think he sees me. Let's see. Let's go over here. See what's in here. over here can't get through there <laughs> what, is he do what is he doing I don't know what he's doing Anybody else in here? Okay, no. What's over here? Perception at once shapes the mind and rules over time. Time, however, erodes human perception and then in turn warps the mind. The mind is capricious, having various effects on perception, time, and the mind itself. With harmony, progress is made. Okay. What is that? What is this? What does that do? What does that do? What does... What do these things do? Okay. I have no idea. Are they all supposed to light up? Eh. Okay. That didn't do anything. They're both lit up. What if I hit this again? I didn't do anything. All right, that's the two. But now the other one's not lit up. Okay, those two are... Nope. Okay. Ugh. Oh, I did it! Okay. Another unfortunate casualty to Tide of Time, insane asylums. I lament their loss not only as brokerage houses for the breadth and depth of human psychosis, but also I shall mourn the disappearance of that peculiar environment present only in an insane asylum. 
That palpable atmosphere of blistered brains and churning bowels, the odiferous melange of freely flowing bodily humours, that gently rolling cacophony of distant sobs and screams, the muttered cursing at perceived enemies, and the blissful gurgling of the lobotomized, like a newborn babe discovering the sky. Mm. Huh. I shall still find test subjects as surely as I find bloody sustenance in the night, but this climate, I fear, may never be replicated. Okay, so I feel like we're dealing with a crazy scientist. All right, then. Wait, isn't this the room where I... Oh, okay. Where's that guy? There he is. Over here. Is it through here? Oh. Is it through here? There's a radio or a tape recorder. Let's listen it to that. It is quite peculiar, the happenings I've been made to witness for my supernatural longevity. I am thinking of one unfortunate phenomenon in particular of unique interest to my station, both as a professional and as a sufferer of this vampiric condition. It seems the stream of time has begun to erode the moorings of my chosen course of study, for the methodologies that gave birth to psychology are slowly disappearing. I find myself in an era that overlooks the physical component of psychological pathology time and again in favor of the sophistic practices of Freud. Phrenology, dactopintalism, and the rest of the old guard has fallen by the wayside, its champions all silenced in death, with my unique exception. Would that I could make my voice heard again, although it may be suspicious should I return to popular medical discourse fifty years after my apparent death. <sighs> no, better that I continue my studies into the psychoses in secret. One day, may I hold up my own cure as validation of the methods. I am confident no cure for my condition or that of my beloved wife lies within our figurative minds waiting to be unlocked by the correct combination of memories recovered from our childhoods. And I'm most certain it has nothing to do with the relationship between myself, my parents, and my genitals. Sorry, Sigmund, but I choose to stay my course. In time, too, may your star fade and disappear. Okay, most of that went over my head, but I did understand the Freud thing. What else is in here? So where did I go? This is where I came from. So I have to go up here. That's nice. Where's the dude? He's over there. What if I go? Can I go in this door? All right, maybe I should try to lockpick that later. Does this lead anywhere? I don't think it does. That does not lead anywhere, okay. Where's the wandering guy? There he is. Wandering around makes me nervous, okay. 
There's two more over here. Okay. Alright, let's get this one. Anything in here? That's locked. Okay, let's try... Oh, there's a lamp thing. Am I supposed to do anything with this? Oh! Oh! Where was that? Where was that? If this is the right way, but it opened for me, so. I don't know if there's anybody else around this corner. Oh! There's that guy. Oh, he just walked by past me. Okay. There's another guy down there. Where's he going? I mean, if you want to think about it, these people are suffering. They're insane. It sounds like the good doctor here has been experimenting on them and made them crazy. So they're, I'm, I'm really just ending their pain. If you think about it. Often I reflect with great regret on the missed opportunity that was my infector. Had I been conscious after the attack, I could have stopped the orderlies from locking her in the roaming pen. What I would give for just one interview, a few simple questions of the plague ridden woman who met her end that dawn. Of course, there is no guarantee she would have been any more helpful than my current crop of test subjects, mewling wretches. Few could be called enthusiastic. Given the nature of the tests, I cannot expect the same fervor from all, but a modicum of cooperation would be appreciated. Animals. The one called John went so far as to gnaw off his arm and escape into the floorboards like some feral rodent. I still I mean, hear him scurrying about at night. He must be making an atrocious mess in there. You made them insane. What did you expect? I don't understand how these scientists expect results from these horrible experiments that they, this guy's dead. Okay. These horrible experiments. Oh, who's this? Is this a that's a picture of somebody. Okay. He did say he had a wife. And that they were, I guess, both turned? My studies proceed at a languid pace. I'm mired in a foul ennui as my wife's illness advances. My subjects grow restless without proper supervision, but I cannot pull myself back from this black depression. How many nights I've wasted now, gazing from the tower walk, pondering the frailty of existence. Okay, so he's depressed now? That's not good. Alright, let's go take this chick out. Okay. Is there someone else down here with the crazy laugh? She was still laughing. Alright, what's down here? Is this where I'm supposed to go? I hope this is where I'm supposed to go. This is another room! It looks just like the other one. There's that one. Okay.
Alright, where is that guy going? Is he does he just no he doesn't. Okay. Are you coming back this way? What are you doing? I feel like I need to deal with him first. Let's go this way. Let's try to follow his path here. Okay, he's dead. I don't like the wanderers. Are you gonna continue to laugh? No. Okay, good. Alright, what about this other one over here? Like I said, I'm putting them out of their misery. Now they can rest in peace, hopefully. Oh, another tape recording. I hear more laughing. Is there someone in here? Oh, there is. Okay. They're still in the mirror. What the hell? They're... Okay. That's weird. This whole thing has been weird, but that's really weird. After decades of solitary study into this affliction, I have learned that it is by no means mine alone. Indeed, the city is home to an entire society of similarly afflicted individuals with whom I've only recently made contact. They are an understandably standoffish sort, by and large, but I have been able to confirm with them that the condition is indeed vampirism, which apparently comes in a multitude of strains, each with a spectacular set of symptoms such as invisibility and even a sort of lycanthropy. Through numerous official interactions with the governing body of this secret society, I have concluded that their fundamental understanding of the vampiric condition is woefully lacking and mired in suspicion and pseudo-religious dogma that would make a Turk balk for its strictures. Indeed, they seemed impressed with my studies and the eloquence with which I was able to present them. Apparently, the typical sufferer of my particular strain of vampirism is far from the vanguard of the king's English. So impressed were they that they even offered me an office in their government, a rather high office by the sound of things, I believe I shall accept. If nothing else, it should provide a lofty vantage point from which to observe the breadth and epidemiology of the affliction so that I may move more expeditiously toward a cure. Wow. So he actually got... Okay, so what do I do? So how do I... Hmm, interesting. Is there a... Is that another room? Because I feel like it is another room. Aha! I knew this was a secret room. He's dead. Alright, what's next? Oh! 
We're back at the library. At least it's what it looks like to me. Oh, that's the thing to the, to the ladder. Okay, well, we don't want that. There might be something over here. Chaos, like the mind, can be understood only through the scientific process. Order, however, is only as good as the perception thereof. Time is the key that links the two and bears witness their ebb and flow. Alrighty then. I have accepted the role of Primogen for Clan Malkavian. The dreadfully winsome label applied to the ah, particular strain of he's vampirism a Malkavian, I suffered, that explains a so lot. named for some supposed vampire father figure of old, more poppycock grown from a backward culture that seems interminably drawn to children's tales and the fiction of Victorian romance when it should concern itself with the science behind their suffering. No matter, for I have taken this office for no greater reason than to advance my research. I must make mention, however, that even among my would-be peers in this governing body of vampires, the level of paranoia and superstition is frightening. Their intelligence is not the question, no, oh, indeed. As they courted me for this appointment, I had to suspect that their overtures were hand-tailored to what must be my obvious infatuation with reason, for the devil would do well to have such honey-tongued tempters. Even so, I could not help but notice the dressing of language these vampire leaders chose for their siren song. Whether it is born of habit, from addressing their unwashed, ill-educated subjects, or from their own deep-seated beliefs, their linguistic flourishes belie a faith in superstition over the providence of empirical reason that must be an all-pervasive theme in this society of darkest night. Damn it all, now I'm doing it too. Okay then. Okay. I think that's supposed to do something. What does it do? I'm not sure. I messed this up. Oh, there we go. Was that downstairs? Okay, so I guess we have to go through the hatch. All right, we can do that. Oh, there we go. Here's some electricity. Oh. Oh. Uh, I don't know what that did. It was supposed to do something. One of these levers turns that one off. Turns one of these off. Why isn't it turning off? Is it this one? No. Oh. Is it this one? over here. I'm not sure what that is, but okay, we'll, we'll take it. Oh, oh, is that the door that wouldn't open for me? This one? Yes. Uh, 
that I hear people. Is there anybody before I grab that recording? Let's see if there's anybody in here. No. It's over here. Okay, I'll take that. Well, let me grab that recording. As I expand my dealings with the vampire government, I have encountered a disturbing new symptom of this affliction. Frequently, in conversation, I will hear voices emanating from other vampires, voices that are not their own, but which seem to have insight into their lives beyond what I could gather from simple conversation. These voices seem to echo from deep within my fellow vampires, and I cannot be certain if this symptom belongs to All my right, there's strength, a middle guy. Theirs, for the voices are various and inconsistent. Is he gonna move? I dare not mention this symptom to my vampiric peers, for they have proven themselves Let's true see if predators I go around this to way? whom I could be loath to reveal any sign of weakness. Oh shit! There's one right there. Indeed, these voices have counseled oh, me I can't go around. confessing their presence, and until I can confirm their source, I will. The information the voices have given me ranges from curious to. Can I go around this way? The latter case is especially true of one powerful no, vampire a lot of whose name I shall here. not commit to recording in the interests of. Is there a reason that I need to be in this room? Maybe I could just leave these guys alone. I'm just gonna kill you. You're in my way. Why is he still, uh... He's still making noise. That's creepy. Oh, there's something over here. What's this? All right, I'll get it after. I need to kill all these guys. All right, one more. All right, that's done. Ah, the keys. That's the refrigerator key? Oh, okay. Thank you. Alright, so I'm assuming I'm going down. There's more of them. How many people did he experiment on? Get behind her. All right, well, you know. All right, they're dead. Oh. Well, that was interesting. The voices have increased in frequency and direction of late. They have begun to stay with me long after conversation has ceased and are oh serving as quite a distraction. I fear others are beginning to notice my then, preoccupation. Wow, the well, how did he get up here? I'm thinking again of the particular vampire of whom I spoke previously. Who I dare not name for my growing fear. If the voices are to be believed, then my caution is warranted, for they speak of his blackest crimes, both past and future. More than once, I have seen the suspicion in his eyes and heard the distrust in his voice when speaking with me. 
The fear must register on my face, as it is all I can do in these moments to keep from crying out in chorus with the voices. Yep, he's going crazy. There's another one. I am no longer safe. I know it. The voices have proven themselves authentic, and I have withdrawn from the vampire society entirely. My absence will no doubt draw attention, but I could no longer hold my fragile composure around the ravenous eyes of my vampire peers, especially not around him. The voices compelled me to make what I fear is a Faustian bargain, but I had to for their demands are constant and merciless. I have secluded myself within the mansion. I know he will strike out at me. He will go to any length to achieve his ambitions, and he knows it, I know. I have taken precautions to protect my beloved. Who knows? The cure will have to wait until our immediate safety is guaranteed. The mansion was constructed with security in mind, but at uh -oh. that time I was not privy to the full range of vampire capabilities. The voices echo in the twisted corridors of my psyche, dark whisperings of a macabre and formless menace, the approach of which portends an end, an end to all of this. Okay, so here's his wife, obviously. She's, I guess in suspended animation. I don't really know. She's frozen. Okay. Oh. Well, he's dead. How did that happen? Uh-oh. The Lord's eclipsed by the flames! What? Who the hell are you? Count is dead? Pity it could not be by my hand. No matter. Soon your self-made kings and false prophets and all who bear the mark of the beast will be washed from the earth for the coming of the Lord. Okay, but who who are you? Yes, you burn. Tell them it was Grünfeld Bach who sent your damned soul to that lake of fire. All agents of Satan shall return to whence they came. Let this righteous display serve as a promise to all who serve the arch fiend Lacroix. I'm coming for you, Lacroix! By the power of the Lord, I will cleanse your black soul! Okay, whatever. There's a door, there's a door. Is this the right- that's not the right door. I need to get out of here. That's not the right door. 